welcome back so today we're going to see how to monitor load balancer resources using azure monitor so this is the architecture that we're going to do so this is the one that we're going to do so this is the resource group that we'll be creating and we also create a subnet uh, virtual network and a subnet related to that and inside that we will be creating different uh, virtual machines using the arm and attach a load balancer to it so to be specific the task that we're going to perform is the first we're going to create a virtual network and then we're going to create a load balancer then we're going to create a uh, backend pools health probes and then we're going to create load balancer rules and create a uh, backend servers and add the virtual machines to those backend servers or backend pools in this case uh, oh shit. in this case this is the backend pool that we have added the virtual machines and uh, then we're gonna install IS on VMs and test the load balancer. And then we're gonna create a load analytics workspace, use the functional dependency view, and then we're gonna see the detailed metrics as well as health. And finally, we're gonna configure diagnosis settings. So let's go ahead and start. So initially, we're gonna create a virtual network so i have already created just to save the time so let me create a virtual network you can search here or you can directly go to the main search box and you can see the virtual network and i have already created so selecting the appropriate uh, subscription and this is the one that i have created so we can create one so select the appropriate uh, subscription and uh, in this case this is the resource group that i have created if you don't have the resource group just create new and add this name here it will be done and coming to the name of this uh, virtual network it's the name that we have given and uh, you can go to the ip addresses here the ip address of this one is let me so this is the IP space that we have used, how we're getting the error. So let me add the subnet as well. So in this case, uh, according to the docs, the name that has been given was uh, my backend subnet and uh, the related IP would be, so this is the range for that. Once you have done, just click add and uh, after adding go to the next one which is the security and uh, make sure it's enabled the patient host and uh, here the name that they have given is the name that i have given and uh, coming to the space so this is the one and uh, so here this is the one that i have created since it's already attached i'm getting error so if you don't have just click here and add that name so it will create for you so once it's done uh, let, uh just go and uh, review and create so it will be done so let me show you so this is the one that we have created so once this is done let's go ahead and uh, create the load balancer so for that search here load balancer in this case i'm seeing here so i'm just clicking so this is the load balancer that we have created let me show you what have we done here so select the proper subscription select the proper resource group that we have created recently and uh, coming to the name this is the name that we have given and uh, we are getting error since it's already there so i'm keeping one so east us and uh, coming to the type it should be internal so you can see more information here. So you can use the internal load balancer to balance traffic from the private IP. So public load balancers can balance traffic outgoing from the uh, public address. So since we are dealing with the private, so we are using this right now. So once this is done, let's go to the second one, which is uh, front end IP configuration. And in this case, let's add so the name here would be load balancer front end 
and uh, the subnet related to that would be my backend subnet so just click and it would be the dynamic and just add it so once you do this operation just go ahead and uh, review and create so let me show so this is the one that we have created so once this is done uh, we have to create the backend pools so let me go to the backend pools so first you have to create the backend pool for that you have to just add and uh, here you have to give the pool name so in this case we have given uh, my backend pool so let me add that my backend pool we are getting error since it's already present so and here you have to add the virtual machines so initially you don't have virtual machines here so for that so you just need to create uh, add this and just add here and uh, the next task would be creating the health probe so let me go back balancer and uh, health probe so just click add here and uh, these are the settings that we have uh, given to the health probe so once it's done just add it and uh, after this we have to create a load balancer rule so this is the other one which is load balancer rule so these are the settings that we have given to this rule and make sure you select the backend pool here and just click save so once it's done we have to create the backend servers so in this case now we'll be using the cloud shell and uh, we'll be using uh, the ARM templates so which you can find in the github so this is the command that we're gonna use for this resource group we are adding these uh, VMs so one two three we are going to add three VMs and once these are created we'll be adding them to backend pools so first you have to upload the certain files so in this case, uh, which would be Azure Deploy and uh, VM1, VM2, VM3. So you can find it in uh, m 0 So I've already uploaded, let me show you. So you can see this is one file and uh, coming to vm2 so that you can see vm2 vm3 and vm1 so these are the files that you need to upload uh, from this github so i'll be providing a link in the description so just add it and uh, once you're done just copy and paste this command so the virtual machines will be created so let me show you the virtual machines here so these are the three virtual machines that we have created now so once you create these three virtual machines we have to add them to backend pool so for that let's go to the load balancer and uh, here you can see we have created a backend pool and here you have to add the three vms so when you click it you can see i have already these three vms if you have not added it just click add and select this vm so you can see i'm getting an option for this my test vm but i'm not adding here so just uh, make sure you add this three so once it's done uh, let's go back now we have to install uh, is on these vms so if i go back to virtual machines let me go to the vm1 and uh, connect it location and uh, these are the username and password which is given in the github so just connect it so once you connect to them uh, you have to so these are the commands that i have used so this is the first command that you have to use and then you have to uh, to remove the existing default uh, web home page you have to use the next command which is this one and uh, next if you want to add any information this is the one so for adding the content this is the one that we gonna use 
so after this similarly you have to perform the same operation the three commands in three vms that we have created which is uh, vm1 vm2 and vm3 so once you are done with that then we're going to test the load balancer so now we'll be creating the test vm so this is the one that we'll be creating so you have to just go to these virtual machines and create and select the appropriate subscription select the appropriate uh, resource group that we have created recently and coming to the name that would be my test vm as you have seen before how i'll be getting errors since it's already present so us uh, utility zone and the, the image will be uh, 2019 gen 2 and uh, make sure you select this size if you select some other cheaper size there will be like you'll be getting error network issues so make sure you have this size and uh, coming to the username and password let me paste it here so this is the username and uh, the password just click and uh, leave the defaults now go to the networking section and uh, this other one and instead of public ip you can see just select none here and uh, coming to nic make sure it's advanced and select minus g so once it's done just go ahead and create so already created so i'm not doing it right now so this is the one that we have created now we'll be connecting uh, to this test vm and uh, test the load balancer so i'll be connecting this one so connect so it's there and uh, open the explorer once it's there add the so this is my load uh, balancer ip so you can see uh, we were able to reach it and uh, if you try to refresh it it's not coming right now but uh, it will be coming based on the load so once it's done so you can find this ip in this load balancer let me show you where is the load there. so if you see more so this is the ip that we have used so you have to just check whether it's working or not so once it's done the next stage will be creating the log analytics workspace so when you're trying to do it try to refresh and you will be seeing other uh, uh, vms associated to our uh, azure portal since i've already used uh, because of this catch i'm only getting this vm1 however let me go back and let me create the log analytics so for that so this is the one so you can just search log so you can see log analytics workspace just click that so here you can see we have select the sure pass and this is the default one and this is the one that i have created for this uh, lab so let me create and uh, select the appropriate azure pass select the appropriate uh, resource group and coming to the name that would be this one since we already have we are getting error just keep one and make sure it's east us because everything is done on east us and go and create so the validation will be passed and you can create it but i'm not creating since it's already been created so let's go back so this is the one that we have created so now let's uh use the functional dependency view so let's go back to all resources 
and uh, select the load balancer and here you can see under monitoring you can see insights click that So you can see uh, to get more information you can uh, view them and if you want to have some detailed view you can check this one and even uh, you can see this topology so to know more about each you can just hover on them and you can also download this topology and you can also view detailed metrics so you can see here and you can uh, select the appropriate uh, section that you want the front end and back end availability since i've just created uh, you can't see much graphs but uh, yeah these are the graphs for them for uh, data throughput and flow distribution connection and metric definitions so you can just read them out and uh, so pretty much this thing let's go back So this is how you can uh, view the metrics and uh, once this metrics is done uh, let's go ahead and view the resource health. So for that we have to go to the monitor section. So you can select monitor here and uh, here you can see service health. Click that and you can check if there is any service issues here. And let's go to the resource health. And in this case, we have correct Azure Pass, and uh, you can select the load balancer, which yeah, this is the one, and you can see, and it's available right now, and it's active. So you can know more about more information here about this thing and uh, the next uh, the final task is to configure the diagnosis settings so for that let's go back again and click all the resources and uh, select the load balancer and uh, here you have under monitoring you have diagnosis settings so click that and you can add here so already have added this so let me show you the settings so these are the settings that uh, we have done for these uh, diagnose settings select the all metrics and send to the log analytics workspace and select the one that you have created recently so don't select the default one select the one that you have created recently so this is how we can do it and uh, pretty much this is the thing uh, for this lab so once it's done, make sure you delete all the resources. So for that, let us use the command here. Go to the cloud shell and make sure you paste this command and just click enter. So it is in process. So whenever you are doing labs, make sure you delete these resources because uh, there will be some charges if you don't delete them because they'll be running 24 by 7 some resources so yeah hope you guys have understood the concept of monitoring the load balance resources uh, using uh, the azure monitor so if you have liked the video please click the like button below and if you're not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel and thank you guys